previously on Savannah. Hey, come on. Come on, wake up. Get the fire extinguisher. Come on. I burned buildings. Edward Burton hired me. You're just saying that. There's no way you can prove it. Pete's a very cautious man. He records his business deals in case one of his partners tries to double cross him. I have a little gift for you. Think of this as an early Father's Day present. And will it look like arson? Not if you hire me. I don't tell anyone what to do. Good. Because if any woman deserves to be in Manhattan, it's her. Writers belong where they're happy, like all human beings. I'm happy here and you're happy there, so why don't you book a flight back? If the insurance doesn't cover our repairs, I'm suing Reese and her lover boy. Lover boy's about to become our partner. I wouldn't bet on that. Why not? Because he's selling Reese a bill of goods. He can't come up with the money. Not enough. Deke, it's Nick. Nick! Good Lord, I was beginning to think you were dead. No, no, I'm fine. I do need a favor. I need to dip into my trust fund. Money. Looks like you're breaking the bank, Deke. I just want to have a little fun before I report back to your father. What are you going to tell him? That you are crazy as a loon. <laughs> well, he already knows that. Uh, excuse me, sir, but my partner and I have some business to discuss. I just found out Nick bought one third of the riverboat. Yes, ma'am. Look, I've got to leave anyway. I scheduled the jet to take off in an hour. I'll give my best to everyone back home. I don't know what underhanded scheme you pulled to get that deed, but you can bet Corelli, your bottom Mr. call for you on that one. I'll take it at the bar. I'll see you at the owner's meeting, hon. <laughs> Aggravating, isn't he? Well, you obviously know him well. I'm an old family friend, Deke Reynolds. Well, Peyton Richards. Genuine pleasure, ma'am. Genuine surprise on my part. I never imagined Nick to have any friends. So, you're his new partner. <laughs> well, maybe you can tell me why Nick was so fired up to buy into this place. Well, he wants us to call him Mr. Corelli instead of Nick. <laughs> well, that's a good cause to shell out big bucks. Oh, don't tell me you are the loser that loaned Nick the money. Nobody loans a Corelli money. Why? Well, they practically print it themselves. His father's itching for Nick to come back and take over the business, but Nick's too stubborn. What exactly is the Corelli family business? Well, I should have said business. It's plural. Cattle, computers, you name it. The Corellis own the whole town. The whole town? I should say the whole town and most of the Permian Basin. What's the Permian Basin? The West Texas oil fields. <laughs> Los Angeles must have treated you well. well. That shows your appearances can be deceiving. I'm flat broke. What? But I thought you were close to signing with a record company. We all about died when we heard. 
promise is not always a promise in Los Angeles. That company wouldn't record one of my songs. Well, but you're so talented. Would you just pick up the phone and tell that to Quincy Jones? I don't know his private number. Maybe you do. Well, I guess you just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Oh, honey, I didn't even make it to the deck. I'm sorry. Don't be. I grew to despise that business. Have you seen your father yet? No. Cassandra Wheeler, you pick up that phone and you call your father. You know what he'll say. I told, I told you, you so. <laughs> and when he does, I will scream. Cassie. Please don't push him, Mackenzie. Dad wouldn't even speak to me when I left. But he's your father. You're pushing it, girl. Now, where's Reese? Oh, well, I was just getting ready to go see her. You want to come? Sure. I'd love to see the riverboat. Oh, Reese doesn't work there anymore. She doesn't? Nope. She sold her share to her new boyfriend. What new boyfriend? Nick Corelli. Peyton hates his guts. Ooh, then that fella had better watch out. Because when Peyton Richards doesn't like somebody, she could be a bat out of hell. <laughs> Honey, you know it. <laughs> Miss Burton, what brings you this way? You? Me? One of the burdens. I'm the gloat. No, I didn't. Did I do something wrong at the riverboat? No. Because I appreciate you getting me that night job, and if anybody's unhappy with my work. I hear you're doing a terrific job on the riverboat. This is about the factory. Oh? That dress. Well, she paid for that. I could feed my family for two months. Tell her. It's all right. I came to protest the factory closing. Well, now, you're a little late on that, ain't you, ma'am? Uh, management scheduled a shutdown for Friday. Management? It's that woman's father that's throwing us out on the streets. I may be Edward Burton's daughter, but that doesn't mean I agree with what he's doing. But I don't have the power to keep the factory open. It's all on us. I need your help. All of you. What can we do, then? Don't punch in today. Give up our last paycheck? You don't need one last paycheck. What you need are permanent jobs. You have more power than you think. Yeah, I'll rule the roost in there. Once the foreman even let me go to the bathroom when I raise my hand. <laughs> the reason River Run is staying open till Friday is so that they can fill their final order. Well, don't fill it. Well, I've barely missed a day's work in over 30 years. And look how your loyalty is being repaid. With a pink slip. That's right. Listen, I can't promise success, but I can promise a fight. Yeah. It's worth a try. Yeah, she has a point. Don't listen to her. Hey, I'm willing to try. Yeah. yeah. Here, read the flyers and stop the machines, and let's keep this factory open. Yeah. Now, you know, Miss Burton, your daddy ain't gonna like this one hour. That only encourages me, Mr. Harvey. <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm reading it. Well, if anyone walks off the job, you fire them. Well, then fire the whole lot of them. No. No, I can't find replacement workers to fill the order in three days. Yes, I will calmly try to think of a solution. Lord, why didn't I have a son instead? What's this? Oh, it's just a little something to welcome our new partner. <laughs> Don't tell me the flowers work, do it. Shall I get someone to bring us a couple cappuccinos? Peyton, do you mind? Oh, did you want one? I want to get the meeting started. Unless, of course, you want me to run this boat by myself, which would suit me just fine. <clears throat> Where all is? This is the latest estimate for repairs to Reese's office. Replacing the paneling is exorbitant, so I suggest we drywall. Tom, it's Nick's office now. Wouldn't protocol dictate that he decide how to decorate it? Well, that office would need repair if Don Juan had knocked over a hurricane lamp when he and Reese were testing out the couch springs. We didn't start that fire. 
You broke in the sofa. You keep it. This is what I think of the um, renovation budget. Look, boys, we are all in business together now. It is time to bury the hatchet. I'd be happy to bury it in his back. I'm shocked. You've always hidden your animosity so well. Look, Tom, Nick is an equal partner now. He is entitled to a decent office. Call my secretary. Tell her I'll be in as soon as I deal with this fiasco my daughter's created. It's not a fiasco. It's a protest. Will you get in this car so we can talk about this? You know Are you willing to make decisions? No. Then I've got to get back to the line. Honey, you're yeah. just cutting your own throat here. This company's going to be yours someday. Then I hope to treat the workers with honesty and respect. Oh, for God's sake, get off your high horse. You don't know what the hell you're doing. I guess this means you can't help me get a job with your father's company. Well, you don't want to work for him anyway. At least I'm not the only one who's on the outs with your father. Does your father lie, hire criminals to do his dirty work, and put hundreds of decent people out of work? I take it those comments were made off the record. Yes, but this is for the record. River Run Factory was built by my great-grandfather decades ago. I consider it a legacy to the Burton family as well as to the city of Savannah. Look what she's done. Not a single worker. Not one machine running. Reese must be out of her mind. And she should be working with me, not against me. She's young. She doesn't know any better. Well, you're young. Would you undermine your family's business? With my family, that would involve returning stolen hubcaps. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Well, she's not only undermining my business and ruining it, she's ruining my reputation as a senator and my health. My blood pressure's shooting right through the roof. Relax, Edward. Yeah. If things don't work out with Reese, you'll always have Peyton. You want me to have a heart attack right here and now? Sorry, why don't you just sit down with Reese and talk us out? She won't listen to a word I have to say. She pays more attention to that damn shiftless boyfriend of hers, Nick Corelli, than she does her own father. Ah, oh, so Nick has her ear, huh? I wish that were all he had. Where's the bartender? Well, he's in the stock room. What can I get you? Oh, surprise me. Oh, well, that could be dangerous. I live dangerously. Did you drive here alone tonight? Oh, my, my lonesome. Well, I'll pour you a nice tea. With sugar or without? With. I told you I live dangerously. <laughs> <laughs> What's a nice woman like you? Doing that alone. Well, my significant other is in a blue funk. Oh. Edward's very upset about Reese picketing his plant. Oh, well, Reese is very upset about her father closing the plant. Not to mention torching the riverboat. He had no idea that she would be on board that night. Yeah, I guess that would make the world a difference to most people, but to me, it's kind of like picking fly droppings out of pepper. It was her boat, whether she was on board or not. Edward only wanted to hurt Tom. Tom drove him insane. You're working with the man now. You should be able to understand that. I'm starting to. Nick, Reese will listen to you. You should at least try to persuade her to calm down. You mean pipe down and quit talking to the press? You start to getting Reese and her father back together. And I'm sure you only have her best interests at heart. I do. But it's none of my business, and I'm not getting involved. I suggest you talk to Reese yourself. Thanks for the drink. What do I owe you? Oh, how can I take your money after you came here to do a good deed? Good night, Nick. Keep giving free drinks to every pretty woman that comes to this boat. We're gonna be in a lot of trouble. I'll try to curb that impulse. Mm -hmm. Surprise! Casey, we 
Wheeler. One and the same. Oh, well, I'll be darned. I haven't seen you in a couple of years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice little business you have here, Peyton. Well, it's a living. <laughs> Speaking of living, Cassie needs a job, and we were thinking there might be an opening on the riverboat. Wait, this isn't a visit. You're staying. Oh, better than that, you're staying with us. Reese invited me. <laughs> it wasn't an invitation. It was a command. Oh, that is great. <laughs> Well, y'all get reacquainted. I'm gonna see if I can find Nick. Have you seen him? Yeah, he was just down there with Veronica. Mm. Veronica? Yeah, didn't you see her? She was in that little white dress with those precious little dolphin ears. What did she want? I don't know, probably the usual. Now, come on and sit down. Are you hungry? Oh, no thanks. Mm. What's the usual? What? Well, Nick and Veronica, the usual, is, is that a drink? No. She likes to have iced tea with Nick and shoot the breeze. Now, I want to hear all the hot stuff about Los Angeles, and I'm not talking about the weather. I didn't know Nick and Veronica were friends. Oh, sure. Ever since he picked up his brother's stuff at our office, they've been the thickest thieves. Oh. Mm. Yeah, Veronica likes him. All the girls do. She's exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. He's an incorrigible flirt. No, he's not. Oh, Lordy, Reese. We would have been making a whole lot more money at the bar if he hadn't been comping all Veronica's drinks. Well, sounds like your man's a handful. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Burton, as candidate for state senate, you promised more jobs for Georgia. Now, how can you justify closing one of your plants? Well, Ms. McKenzie, <laughs> better close down one plant than go out of business altogether. Are you concerned about more than one plant? Is Burton Industries posting losses this quarter? Burton Industries is fit as a fiddle, but only because I'm willing to make the hard decisions. And let me tell you, closing down that plant was a gut-wrenching experience. Is uh, management facing any cutbacks in staff or salaries? Not in staff, no. But I am instituting pay cuts at the top level. Drastic pay cuts. Oh, shoot. I have a phone interview in two minutes, dear. Oh. You excuse me? If you need any more information, just call me. Oh, no, I, I have enough. Thank you. Well, thank you for stopping by, dear. <laughs> it's important, I think, that they get both sides of this issue. I do, too. Good to see you. You, too. Thank you. Yep. Savannah Dispatch? Put me through to the publisher's office. Hello, Edward Burton here. Glad I caught you before you went to dinner. You know I don't like to ask for favors, but there's a reporter that works for you who's having a field day with this protest my daughter's leading. Lane McKenzie. Now, I don't mean any disrespect to the Fourth Estate, but how about killing that story? I can't do that, Edward. Why not? It would only arouse suspicions. Much better to bury it on the back page, don't you think? If you say so. Trust me, Lane McKenzie won't win any Pulitzers when I'm finished with her story. Savannah will return after these messages. And now we return to Savannah. You cut my article to ribbons. I've cut your work before. Not like this. We thought it was too inflammatory. We? Yeah, this came from above. Oh, the owner is getting involved in editorial? That's her prerogative. But she never even comes to the office. She's here today. Well, then I'm going in. Wish me luck. Lane. I hate to bother you. Oh, it's no bother. It's a pleasure to spend some moments with one of our reporters. I so rarely spend time in the office these days. What can I do for you? Well, I, I want to talk to you about my story on the River Run factory closing. Yes, that story broke my heart. All those people thrown out of work. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. I'm hoping that my next piece will run on the front page instead of yeah. getting buried next to the abyss. Next piece? And my first report only scratched the surface. You do yourself an injustice. Even with the trims, I thought it was perilously insightful. But there's so much more to tell. Well, unfortunately, I don't think our subscribers will care to hear it. Our job is to inform the people. Your job is to inform the people, and my job is to sell advertising. 
Articles out infinitum on the misery of the river run factory workers will bore most people in this town to tears. Day after tomorrow, this will not only be old news, it'll be old newsprint on the bottom of birdcage. We have a civic responsibility. Yes, to... we do. To preserve this historic newspaper from going the way of that dead factory. Now, our readers want variety, which is why I would suggest you direct your considerable talents to some new topic. But I really... And if that's not acceptable, you are free to seek employment elsewhere. Here's says Savannah, may I help you? Hey, Peyton, it's Reese. Hi. Would you mind if I used your copier? I want to run off some more copies of the flyers for the next workers' meeting. Well, that sounds like something Daddy would hate. You come on over. I'll buy some extra paper. Thanks. I'll see you in a half hour. Mm-hmm. We're replacing some kitchen equipment, and I was considering donating it to charity. What do you think? You're asking my opinion? As co-owner. Well, as one of three co-owners, I think it's a good idea to ask Tom. You may want to sell it. Well, it doesn't matter what Tom wants if the both of us want to donate it. Two votes to one. I remember you donating your time to the Second Chances Fair. You really are interested in doing charity work, aren't you? Don't let my secret out. It'll ruin my tough chick image. Well, I think your image is safe enough. Well, I boxed up the equipment. Do you mind dropping it by Veronica's charity? That's no problem. I was headed out anyway. Thank you. You know, outnumbering Tom has its merits. This does feel like the beginning of a beautiful... Friendship. Oh, at the very least. I can't believe I let you talk me into this. He's your father. You have to see him sooner or later. Oh, later would have been fine with me. Oh, your father's a sweetheart. We're like oil and water. He hates everything I've done. I'm sure that's not true. Could have gone to law school. But she walked away from it to pursue a singing career. <laughs> Cassie is passionate about music. Oh, it's not passion. It's just plain contrariness. Ever since she was two years old, whatever I said, she said the opposite. I said, take the scholarship. Go to law school. She ran off to L.A. with a bass player. I mean, she's just stubborn. A woman is stubborn. He is as stubborn as a mule. Once he makes his mind up, there's no change in it. Well, you've come home. I mean, that's got to count for something. <sighs> oh, gosh, I hope he doesn't yell. I just hate it when he yells. Well, don't yell. I'm not going to yell. I doubt if I'll even have anything to say. You have a lot to catch up on. You haven't spoken with your daughter in two years. I don't want to say anything that will set her off. I mean, she's so touchy. Play it safe, then. You know, talk about the food. I just, um, don't know what I'm gonna say to him. He makes a federal case out of the least little thing. Well, look, if you're worried about it, just, I don't know, talk about the food. Uh, I know they are. See you. Hi. Hi. You look good. So, how have you been? Fine. Good. And you? Can't complain. That's good. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm starved. Then let's order. Fine. All done, thanks. Mm. Happy to oblige. Mm, Dad's gonna have hell to pay if he wants to close that factory now. Mm, hey, wait, Reese, uh, you better check the messages. People still think you work here. That's a good idea. Hey. Veronica's calling Nick? Yeah, I told you they were friends. This one says to call after eight. 
Well, now that sounds strange. What number did she leave? The home or the office? It says home. Where is Nick? Well, he had some errands to run. He said he wouldn't be back till later. Hey, Dave, where did Nick go? He said he was dropping some things off at Second Chances. Mm. Veronica's charity? Oh, now, Reese, don't work yourself into a state. We had some equipment to donate. But all of a sudden, it sounds like they're best friends. I don't see Nick all day, and then she's calling for him here, and he goes to see her. Well, I told you Nick was a flirt, but you never listen to me. Well, the chili was great. Not too spicy. My salad was fresh. Uh, how about some pie for dessert? Pardon me, but the only thing you two have caught up on is the menu. Can't you think of anything to say that doesn't involve food? I shouldn't have let so much time go by without calling you. I'm sorry. You could have picked up the phone, too. You were afraid that I'd yell. You were afraid I wouldn't listen. So happy that you're back home, Cassie. Me too. So, what are your plans? First, I'm getting a job. Hey, you're in luck. Chief was just talking about an opening at the switchboard this morning. At the police station? Sure. Now you can live at home and we can ride to work together. Dad, I already um, have a tryout for a job at the riverboat. You gotta be a waitress? No. Dean told me the restaurant has a small jazz trio, and... You're helping her sing? Well, no, I, I mentioned it to Dean first, Michael, and it, it was Peyton's idea. It's just an audition. Thought you moved back home to get away from all that foolishness. Well, it's not foolish to me. This lunch was a damn idea. Thanks for setting me up, partner. I'm surprised you made it back to the boat tonight. Why? Oh, Peyton said he had a bunch of errands to run. Yeah, I did. Like what? I'd go to the bank, the hardware store, that kind of stuff. That's all? Oh, I wish. I had a string of tiresome, boring errands to run that everyone hates. It was one of those days. Get a chance to return Veronica's calls? What calls? When well, I saw that. She left some messages, and I know she stopped by the boat. Forget I asked. She's probably calling to see if I tried to keep you from going to the press about your father. Why would she call you? Why wouldn't she call me directly? I had told her to call you. So you did talk to her today? Yeah. Yeah, she dropped by the boat. Why, why all this sudden interest in Veronica? I just didn't know you two were friends, that's all. You're jealous. No, I'm not. Yes, you no. are. Yes, you are. You know I'm every woman's dream, and you're wondering how you had the good fortune to nab me. I don't know if it's good fortune if you have a roving eye. I only have eyes for you. Mr. Massey. Yeah. Now, we stripped the paneling off the burned wall and want to know what you want to do about the safe. What safe? Well, I don't know if this safe is important to you. It looks like it hasn't been used in years. If you want to just forget about it, you could save a few bucks and just seal it off. Uh, I'm not sure, Bruce. Well, we could uh, reproduce the secret door so no one would know it's there. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, I'll get back to you. Right? You know, we're reviewing the construction budget right now. And look, do me a favor, don't mention this to anyone, okay? You know how stories can get out, you know, and the next thing you know, people think there's a doggone treasure map in there or something. We'll be targeted by burglars, okay? I won't mention a thing. All right, thanks. Really appreciate it. So 
Savannah will return after these messages. Now we return to Savannah. Have you seen today's paper? There is not one word about the River Run strike. And I thought the music business was sleazy. I feel like quitting. Well, that won't help matters. Well, how can I work for someone who cares more about selling ads than reporting the news? She wants to sell ads, does she? Oh, it's her goal in life. Then I'll buy one. A big, fat, full page all about what's happening at River Run. I'll set up my computer to write the copy. And Eleanor Alexander won't be able to edit it because I'll be paying for it. Freedom of speech at its finest. Morning. Well, what are you doing here so early? That's as civil as you can get. Pretty much. Well, I have business to tend to. That's what owners do. They tend to business. Part owner. And you cannot use your office. Why not? Asbestos. Come again? Oh, a contractor found asbestos in the insulation behind the walls. It has to be professionally removed. Oh, I'll leave it. It's not harmful if you don't disturb it. Well, it's too late. The construction crew already broke big holes in the walls. There's pieces of it all over. I debated telling you. I toyed with the idea of letting you just sit in there and inhale toxic fibers, but, uh, well, little angel on this shoulder, one out over the little devil on that shoulder. <laughs> and I always thought you had devils on both shoulders. I'm looking for something in an ocean motif. Do you have any dolphin earrings? Let's see, I have some seashells. And sand dollars. Here we go. Dolphins. Oh, they're perfect. I'll take them. How's it coming? You're all set? What do I owe you? I'll send you a bill. Thanks. It may not be worth it. It doesn't look like there's very much inside. her husband, Edward. She carried this diary. Lisa's mother left a diary. I thought newspapers were in the business of selling ads. Secondarily, our chief concern is informing the public. Oh, well, I want to inform the public about this. But your advertising department won't run it. We're not obligated to run every ad that's submitted. Why not this one? It's inflammatory, Reese. It's irresponsible for the newspaper to incite the public. Your newspaper runs ads for strip clubs and massage parlors. That's hardly contributing to the welfare of society. I'll take that under advisement. You'd better hope I'm not in charge of an advertising budget for some corporation, because when I am, I won't spend one dime of it here. On the contrary, Reese, I hope you are in such a position one day. You might better understand sound business practices, and you'll view this whole experience in a different light. I had hoped that you two would make up, not start World War III. Let me tell you something, Dean. Really? When I was young, I wanted to be the next Thurgood Marshall. But my father couldn't afford to help me pay for college. In fact, he couldn't afford to feed his kids. So the first minute I could, I got a job to help out, and I've been working ever since. I know that. I worked overtime, saved every penny I could so I could send my kids to college. And they were all good students, right? Mm hmm Now, Cassie, she was accepted to law school. She could have had what I only dreamed of, but she threw it away. Wait and see how you feel if your kid ever does something that stupid. You're right. I'll be mad as hell if my son ever has the nerve not to follow my dream. What's that supposed to mean? That means that you don't care what Cassie wants, that's what. What Cassie wants is bad for her. Who are you to decide that? Her father. That's right, her father. The person who's supposed to stand beside her, cheering her on. 
Or is there some fine print that says parents only support their children if they fulfill the parents' dreams? Here you go, Chief. Hey, thank you. That's disgusting. Now listen, I'm going to Riverboat tonight to hear Cassie sing. Mm. She might appreciate a friendly face. <laughs> Oh, girlfriend, oh. you look so good. Doesn't matter if you can sing. Oh, I wish I could sing. I wish I could write. Oh, you can. You can do anything, Cass. Yeah, that's why we hate you. You and my father. <laughs> and listen, don't worry about him. Mm -hmm. Just go out there and you knock him dead. <laughs> go get him. Break a leg. Mm. Well, let's sit down and listen. Where's Nick? Oh, um, save him a seat. I'll go get him. Mr. Corelli, your lovely lady awaits your presence. <laughs> Reese already here? Yeah, she's here, but she's anxious to leave. I thought she wanted to hear Cassie sing. Oh, she does, to be polite. But she told me she's hoping you whisk her away to your love nest for a little roll in the hay. <laughs> oh, that does not sound like the way Reese talks. Those are my words, not hers. Reese is far too shy to say it outright. You know, she's been all tied up in knots since this feud with her father. She needs to unwind. That's a tough assignment. But I'll try to help. Mm hmm <laughs> to see me crying I don't know why I stay home each night when you say you'll phone you don't and I'm left alone singing the blues and sighing you treat me coldly each day My daughter, my baby girl. <laughs> Is there any uh, chance of you and me you know, slipping out early? Sure. <laughs> Are you sure Cassie won't be offended we left early? Mm, positive. <sighs> mm, feels so good to be in your arms. Mm. You think my arms feel good? Mm. What? Oh, someone's stuck in him. What? Mary. Well, at least it didn't fall on the floor. Put it on the nightstand. It's not mine. 
Well, it must be the cleaning woman's. How could it be the cleaning person's? Your bed isn't even made. Well, I don't know where it came from. I do. It's Veronica's. Veronica's? What is wrong with you? She hasn't been here. I'm not a fool. I'm not involved with anybody else, let alone Veronica. Oh, like you'd say if you were. This is insane. I have no idea how that earring... Tell your mystery date. I think she's got lousy taste in jewelry. Reese. Savannah will return after these messages. And now we return to Savannah. Lock it. Fighting right to the bitter end, huh? Don't do this, Dad. Save your breath, honey. The workers are willing to make concessions. They'll take pay cuts to keep the plant profitable. I'm not negotiating with you. How can you be so pig-headed? Me? I told you this was business. But you turn it into a personal crusade. It isn't over. The hell it isn't. You lost, I won. This plant's closed. Lock it up. Now let me be the first to congratulate you, Eleanor. You are now the owner of the second largest textile plant in Honduras. Thank you, Edward. And with River Run closed, I'm gonna have to find a buyer for all of its equipment. I fear I'm just gonna be forced to sell it to you for bargain basement rates. Bargain basement is how I love to shop. <laughs> It'll be a good tax write-off for me. And we should be up and running in Honduras inside six weeks. With no OSHA regulations or unions or environmental laws to get in our way, we should have a very profitable venture. I'm thrilled to be your partner, Edward. I'm a silent. My lips are sealed. Hey. Hi. I guess I should have called first. Um... I'm not much in the mood for company. Well, I just want to give you this. What is it? That is your mother's diary. What? The contractor, he found a hidden safe in the riverboat. This was inside. My, uh, my father put it there. Oh, my gosh. I gather he and your mother were very close friends. You read it? Oh, yes. She didn't have anything nice to say about Edward. Neither do I. Why didn't you keep this to use it against him? Because as much as I hate your father, I love you more. You'll be uh, particularly interested in page 70. My mother willed me half of Burton Industries. All these years and dad never said a word. Did you bring me the money? It's in the bag. I'll need more later. What is this business with you singing on the riverboat that wasn't part of the plan? I couldn't get a job at Burton's plant. His daughter's still fighting with him. Does Reese Burton have any idea why you're really here? She doesn't have a clue. I don't know where the earring came from. Yeah, I believe you. The timing could have been worse. Reese has a being a bother about Veronica anyway. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Hey, there's nothing going on between Veronica and me. No, I mean, I'm not surprised that Reese is jealous. It is not the first time. It's not? Look, I shouldn't even talk about this. Reese is not only my sister, but she's my best friend. Uh, if you have something to tell me, just, just say it. Well, sooner or later, Reese manages to ruin every relationship that she has. She's insanely jealous. It's like she's seen Fatal Attraction one too many times. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, it hadn't struck me up until now. Thanks for the tip. I don't want to go down that road with a woman again.
tuned for upcoming scenes from the next episode of Savannah. Join us again next week for another all-new episode of Savannah, right after an all-new 7th Heaven. And check out the WB Wednesday Night Comedies. This week, it's a brand new Sister Sister, followed by Nick Frino, licensed teacher, with special guest star Dave Coulier from Full House. Then, it's all new episodes of The Wayans Brothers and The Jamie Foxx Show. All new comedy, Wednesday night on the WB.